Well, today on WCR Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about construction cleaning, CCUs, what to do. Do you do it? Do you charge right? Do you do a proper job? Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's going on? Thank you very, 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 very much for hanging out with us today. If it's your first time, take a look around. We've done this now for over three flipping years. Three years. Weekly podcast. Check it out. You got a lot to catch up on if you are an OG. If you are one of the nation, one of the cool kids. Well, thank you. That's cool kids, somebody who watches everything, all the episodes, thumbs up, comments on YouTube, and especially buys your supplies through me. It is because of you that I get name brand spree spray cheese. That's the last one somebody told me what I could get was uh, name brand spray cheese. I don't know that I've ever even eaten spray cheese. It sounds absolutely awful, but now I can buy the fancy stuff. So thank you very much. Uh, If you haven't had a chance to buy from me, if you need any type of supplies, that's what I'm here for. 862-312-2026 is my number, and that's a cell phone. So save that number as Jersey. I'm probably the only Jersey you know. But save that number. Uh, Anytime you need an order, text me. It's all in your cart. Text me with the order itself. Call me, whatever. I would love to put the order in. For you, it doesn't cost you any extra, but it is like a virtual high five. And uh, it helps me afford my luxury spray cheese that I am. By the way, if you don't know yet, if you're new, every time, not every time, a lot of times people put in orders. They always tell me what kind of off the wall uh, name brand thing I can buy with the money I make on it. Tell me. I love it. I love hearing these people. Some of the ideas are absolutely epic. Anyway. Go do that. Let me be a rep. I would love nothing more than that to be a rep. A couple of quick shout outs, by the way. Uh, Joey Juan. Juan. Joey, I knew, I knew. I talked to Joey on the phone and he was like, bro, give me a shout out. I don't know if it was on the phone or on the, yeah, I think it was on the phone. And I didn't ask. I looked at your name and I should have been like, how do you say your name? But I didn't because I don't think like that. I'm not a pre-thinker, apparently. Anyway, what's up, Joey? Uh, Rob Wilbert, NYA Cleaning. What's up, man? Uh, Nathan Young. uh, He was one with the name brand Shaving Cream and Razors for this patchy thing that I have on my face. By the way, I keep thinking every day I'm going to shave it off. I don't know. We'll see. Who cares? Either way, thank you guys for being epic uh, and being cool kids, man. Anyway, today we're talking about construction cleaning in the window cleaning industry. Now, let me preface this all by saying we did construction cleaning, I hated it, and I did CCUs, actual construction cleanups. Those themselves are not just uh, doing the windows, but we would send in our janitorial people and uh, do the janitorial side of the clean everything, wipe everything down, and then hit the windows And basically, it's to hand over keys. So with this being said, I'm going to focus on the windows. There's great money in it. Great money in it. Because you can send your crews there for an entire day and they'll make money all day. Because when you hand over keys as a builder, it has to be like, here's your new home. Right? Birds chirping, candles, fresh baked cookies. It can't, you can't leave dust anywhere. Even though building a house is extremely dirty... And dusty and everything is covered with everything you have to hand it over clean and there's one thing if you have not done a construction cleanup yet I am telling you right now you will never look at new building ever again because you look at the stuff you're like oh man it's so clean it's so crisp it's so fresh until you do the construction clean you're like holy cow this is awful because you're focused on stuff remember they're building houses in like three months, four months, they're doing an entire house, like foundation to house. It's crazy. It's crazy. We had some friends that built a house and it was literally three months. It was like a day over three months. They built an entire house from just grass. Well, it was dirt, dirt 
to here's the keys, now you can sleep here in three months. Just imagine all that goes through that. Concrete, you know, plumbing, electrical, it all has to work, connected to it's craziness, right? So they build it super fast, they're not always super clean with it. So there's a lot of information kind of coming at you from a different side. Uh, the janitorial is its own thing. I mean, you are literally wiping down baseboards. You're wiping down crown molding and fixtures and everything. It's uh, a whole nother ball game. Maybe I'll do that another time. Uh, let me know if you would be interested in uh, an episode on that. And by the way, if you have any ideas for episodes, let me know, man. Three years of doing this, I love getting ideas from everybody else who uh, yeah, has them. Because you guys got ideas for stuff I don't. So let me know. Anyway, the first thing to know about a construction clean is you will need to remove stuff off the glass. Now, I'm not talking about bug butts or dirt or any of that. But basically, what a construction clean is, is you're getting the windows to being perfect windows. Now, we call them dirty builders. We have a couple dirty builders I won't do work for anymore. And it's because the contractors they use or the standards they have suck, right? Um, most windows, not most, a lot of windows are plastic wrapped, right? The glass itself has plastic and it's just a, a hair like a quarter inch around it that's glass. The problem is with overspray and um, with silicone and the sealers and the painters and the everything, that gets covered. Well, it's not bad because you peel that off, you have way less work, it could be gross and dirty, you peel that off as long as the windows are semi-new and they haven't sat there for you know six years. And it's pretty easy, you just scrape the edges and you're done. The problem is, is not always do they have plastic on there. And if you're a dirty builder, that means you're wiping a lot. The glass is like the place they put everything, from silicone, like I said, to paint over spray, they just don't care because then it's somebody else's problem. That's where construction cleans come from. Your job is to then make that window look perfect. So you're always going to remove stuff from the glass. Now, you've seen the debate here. Some people still think that razors scratch tempered glass. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that I've never in my life seen actual proof that tempered glass is somehow softer than regular glass and a clean razor can scratch that. I couldn't believe the last time we talked about that, how many people said, oh yeah, scratches. That scratches, fresh razor. It doesn't make sense because the hardness is different. It, anyway, that's for another episode. So you're gonna use a razor, basically. Some of you out there don't use razors, and that's crazy to me, but it's your own prerogative, right? Uh, if you're using a clean razor, you're not gonna scratch the glass. But the downside is, is if there's scratches on the glass, you're the guy that get blamed. So every single time, depending on whatever builder, you have to have a scratch glass waiver signed for fabricating debris. You need to have, if you can with the builder, a home harmless, something to remove you from being blamed for everybody else's headaches. Because here's the thing. On glass, when glass is dirty, you can't see scratches. You just can't. They're very, very fine. As soon as you clean the window, that's all they notice because now it's on the glass. Everything else, they're looking through dirt. So if you clean a window, don't even use a razor. Clean a window and it's all scratched up and you say to the builder, oh, I didn't even use a razor. They don't care. They don't care. I've had builders before. They're like, I don't care. You touch the window. Literally say that to me. I did touch the window, right? That, I mean, that, how, how, how are you blamed for that? That's like the Tyler getting blamed for a fire at the house. Well, you're in the house. Yeah, but there's no way that I could start a fire laying tile. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I've had that. So there's kind of, you got to pick and choose a good builder to deal with. And the longer you're with a builder, the better feel you get for the builders, how they do things. Are they a dirty builder? Are they one of those guys who always wants to make more money? You'll find that out. The other thing with builders and construction cleanup is they want to know a price of what you'll charge across the board. We'll talk pricing later, but having a set price is really nice for a lot of the builders. The longer you have it, we have probably uh, probably half a dozen builders maybe that uh, they don't even 
get quotes because they just know where our pricing is. They know our pricing is always right. They probably figured out our pricing at some point. And uh, they just say, hey, here's the address, 123 Fake Street. We need it done. Keys are getting handed over in three weeks. Keys are getting handed over in two weeks. Now, the problem is if you've not done any type of construction clean or even looked at new building, when they hand keys over on a Tuesday, that means they're working on it up until Monday night. There's always stuff there. I've never, ever been in a construction clean that was hired on by a builder that there wasn't filled with stuff that you had to work around. I've been on construction cleans. They wanted me to bid the job. There wasn't even windows. It was just like wood openings. I'm like, how am I bidding windows that don't even exist right now? So builders have a lot of things going on. So you have to deal with a little bit of nutsiness from that. You also have to deal with other contractors. The thing is, when you get into finishing, usually it's not super bad or dusty. I've been into jobs where drywallers are still like sanding things down, which means they still have to paint. And I'm there cleaning the windows. It's like, you guys got your timing wrong. But what happens is then the builders are like, well, can you, if you're not, don't do it today. Can you come tomorrow? Can you come Friday? No, man, I got a whole schedule. This is planned. So you got to be able to do a little bit of jumping through hoops for builders. Uh, but the nice thing is, depending on what market you're in, you're going to get a lot of work from the builders. I'm in Charlotte where there is uh, building everywhere. I mean, the amount of new construction here is mind-blowing. When I was in Wisconsin, not as much construction. We'd get uh, maybe one a month, something like that. Where here, I mean, you could build a business in just that. So it all depends on your market, what you're doing, and who you're dealing with. But construction cleaning, it becomes super simple to where your builders... You know, if you're doing a couple a week, a couple a month, a couple every six months, whatever it is, builder goes, hey, it's John from uh, XYZ Building. Uh, we got one here at 123 Fake Street. Why don't you get the windows done? Okay, great. Uh, when are you handing keys over? Uh, keys are getting handed over on the 26th. All right, cool. We'll make sure to get uh, as close as we can to that 26th. And uh, is there a key code? Yes, there is. You know, we don't lock it. Whatever. Okay, great. Did you need a bid on this one? Nah, just get it done. Right? If they do need a bid, it adds time and you got to plan all that, but they, they want you to jump through hoops. Usually, and this is every build is different. If you do construction cleans, tell me down below or everybody watching, I should say. But usually our uh, warning that we get for building uh, is usually anywhere from a week to two weeks. And as you guys know, most of the time you're booked out well past that. Even with a lot of crews in our busy season, we're... Maybe, you know, four weeks out on our slow season, we're maybe two weeks out. It's a little bit crazy. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that you need to kind of plan for. Builders are great. They hand you a lot of work, but you got to jump through hoops from them. So make sure to keep that in the back of your head. Building relationships, they'll send you them, they'll send you them, they'll send you them. I have uh, one builder who we did not only the complexes for the apartments that they were building, which was like, hey, we have this giant thing we need done. We had to bring people on. It was a like whole thing. They needed it done, of course, yesterday. But we're doing like, I think that one was 32 units and we had a week and a half to do it or something it's ridiculous. But you make them happy. It's one less thing they have to worry about. They just send you work. Your cost of acquisitions is just not there. You're doing a lot of work and tedious stuff, but you charging way more than you normally would. There's a lot of benefits as long as they're a clean builder and they're not making your life a living heck. By the way, I don't normally swear if you're new on the show. Yeah, unless I have a guest who swears and then I get lots of hate emails about how horrible the swearing was. Anyway, uh, no, but uh, choose a builder. Get that builder on board with you and they'll send you a ton of work. Really, really will send you a ton of work. So keep them happy. But what to look for from construction cleaning? Like I said, that quarter inch on the outside is always going to be the biggest headache. But your frames need to be clean. Your sills need to be clean. Your windows need to be clean. The other thing is, is that all that dust and debris, especially like fine dust from drywall and everything else, sits in the nooks and crannies. So you're going to need a toothbrush. You're going to need a vacuum. You're going to need a sill brush if you're using it. Maker makes a really nice one I like. You're going to need razors. You're going to need more than a normal window cleaning. But you're also going to charge more. Now, a normal construction clean window takes me three times as long as a normal window. That's just across the board 
pretty fair assumption. I've had windows take way longer. I've had jobs I showed up and like, wow, I have one builder and I tell you, it's I swear if he, if he didn't tell me beforehand, I would think that they were just washed like a month prior. They're just clean. There's nothing I have to scrape off ever. There's not anything on these windows. They're great. And uh, the reason is because the, the masking is good. The people actually give a darn and they peel it all off before I even get there. So I don't even have to remove decals or labels or stickers or anything. It's amazing. Anyway, so sometimes you find really good ones. But I've had other builders where you show up and you're like, holy cow, it would be cheaper for you to smash this window, replace it, than it is going to be for me to clean this dumpster of a window, right? So you got to keep that kind of in mind. But that's what you're looking for. You're looking for anything that's affixed to the glass. And the way that I do that is I'm going to clean the window first. And then I steel wool the whole thing. I scrub it. Get it all nice and, and wet. I use a lot more water than I would normally. Uh, because there is going to be some dust. Dust sucks up water. It dries your window off quicker. So I use a lot more water. I soak the window. Hit it with that scrubber. Then I take my steel wool and I wet uh, wet wool the window. That's what we call it. I don't know. All the way up to the edges, hit it all real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Then squeegee it. Anything then left is I'm going to move to a razor for the heavy stuff, or I'm going to run to wool, which is faster uh, for zero steel wool, of course, or bronze wool if you're using it. Uh, bronze wool is always what we use for the wet side. Uh, the dry side, we usually use steel wool or bronze wool, whatever you got handy. Um, but then I'll detail again, and usually it's okay. Sometimes you got to razor stuff. Sometimes you got to blade stuff. Sometimes you have to remove stickers. Sometimes there are sill stickers, which are a pain in the butt. Um, so there's all these things you have to kind of look for. Normally, in a normal window, when you get to somebody's house, they're not like that. But this one, they are. And a lot of times, a builder will leave the label on the window from the window. They just want you to take care of that, which is nice because, again, that protects the window from getting totally dirty, but it's something else to peel off. Now, if you see it and that sticker has been sitting in the sun for a year, or say they had a project and that project was then put on hold, now it sucks to pull that decal off because you're going to be blading off this like super stuck-on terrible decal, and it sucks. So make sure you know about that. Make sure that you kind of prep if you can. Know the builder. Know the builder. That's going to help you hugely in um, how you decide on what you're charging. Um, our dirty builder that we still do some work for, uh, I know his laborers are the dirty side, but we always charge him a little bit more than the other guys because I know I'm going to be putting more work. And he's fine with it. He knows that's where everybody does, but he says that everybody else speeds up because you're um they're doing that on the window so either way um make sure you know the builder uh, but what to expect on a job is another side of it that people don't think about when you are on a job your job when you're done needs to be great that people come in and go ah oh, this is my house this is my home we can move our stuff in right but there's a lot of things on there that in a normal window cleaning, people aren't going to be looking at as much as a construction clean. So again, if you think I'm wrong, tell me down below. But construction clean, they'll always have higher standards when you're done. And the reason is, is because now those people are looking at the windows. They look at everything in a building. And the reason is, is because a builder will come back and fix nail pops and settling and cracks and drywall issues and all that. So they're looking at everything through a fine tooth comb. Windows just happen to be one of those things. That's why a lot of times if anything's scratched, it gets blamed on you. And they're finding the scratches because now they're looking at absolutely everything. So that's what you need to expect with construction cleans. They're going to want way more from you. The kind of ending has to be has to be much higher than even a standard window can be. A regular house, a commercial, route, whatever. Construction clean always is going to be the most picky. So make sure you know that. Make sure you know it's going to take you longer. Make sure that you know you're going to have to go a little bit more in detail. Make sure you know your hands are going to hurt from all the corners and detailing. Uh, it just is what's going to happen. Now, there's a good side and a bad side to everything. And there is with construction cleaning. The bad side to construction cleaning, we kind of went over some of it. But is that you have to work way harder. You have to do a window where... 
you have to train your brain to be like, it's okay to be five minutes on this window. It's okay to spend more time or to really look into it or to have to scrub way hard. You have to have that in your brain. The hard part is that when you're doing normal houses, you're not thinking that. You're just getting it done. You're out. You're cool. If you've done this for long enough, it's really hard to go, okay, I now have to take five minutes on this window when your brain is like, come on, we got to do it. We got to don't panic on the windows. Just understand it will take you longer. You're charging more. I know somebody, uh, a couple people actually, who said that they uh, don't charge more for construction cleans. And I don't know why you're stepping over dollars to make pennies at that point. You have to charge more because it's taking you more. Your time is what you're charging for. Our time is what we're charging for. Chemicals don't cost a lot. You know, we're not selling a t shirt for $10, we bought for $5. It's just all time. So if something takes you longer, you have to charge more. It's just the fact of the matter. That's one of the bad side. Make sure to watch your builders. There are bad builders. Make sure to watch your glass. There is bad glass. There's people who use Old Castle glass. Old Castle's just garbage. I've never, I mean, it's all bad glass. There's certain types of windows. They put in the cheapest windows because that's the type of builder they are. They put in garbage, you know, seals and sills and everything else and stuff is scratched don't deal with builders that are crap you don't have to there's a lot out there the work is not worth being blamed i know somebody who did a new construction clean this is way back in the day he was this young kid who really just seemed like he was he was just on it asking a lot of questions this is like the early days of forums and things and uh, one day he came in and said a builder is telling me i scratched sixty five thousand dollars in glass what can I do? Everybody jumped in. We tried to help him do whatever. And we never, ever heard from that guy again. Not ever. So I'm pretty sure the builder won. Now, that's not to scare you. That's to explain that stuff can happen. You're going to be blamed for anything they find on the window. So there's a big time when you need to stop doing what you're doing if you see any type of scratches. Also, if you're using a razor, there is a possibility that there's going to be some fabricating debris on the glass. In 15 years of, of doing window cleaning, I've seen it once on a window. I've seen it once. So if that tells you how many millions of windows I've probably done, I don't know how many minute windows we've done. That was me personally that I found fabricating debris. The windows were so jacked up you could see it through the dirt. And we did that project uh, that was every three weeks they had it set up. It was a house that I did every three weeks. And we've never used razor because it's three weeks of dirt. Um, but you could see exactly what it was, you know, from the very beginning. And I showed them and they're like, oh, well, I don't even notice it. So, right. But there is a possibility for that. That's why people freak out on razors. There is a product called Cement Off. It works, but it takes like 30 minutes for it to break down concrete. I don't have the time for that. Ain't nobody got the time for that. But it's a popular chemical. Uh, if you want to try it, let me know. Again, shameless plug, 862-312-2026. Let me know. Uh, it's not extremely expensive. It does work. It just takes some time. doesn't change the fact you're going to have to use razors, wool, or anything. For the most part, you can take even paint overspray, fine spray off with bronze or steel wool. So that's really nice. Uh, a lot of times uh, contractors will also ask, can I water feed new construction? You can. We do in a lot of our new construction stuff because the outs aren't going to be as dirty as the ins. But the big thing is, is that they, um, you have to still check the, through the insides to see how the outsides are. Uh, every now and then we don't get them good enough with the water fed and the bronze wool pad holder and you have to redo them or touch them up or whatever. So be prepared for that. It is possible. It's not perfect, but it is possible. So keep that in mind. Uh, one other thing is a dormer window uh, in an attic, which is a false window to let light into like an attic space. Those ones are always going to be a little trickier and you really don't have to clean them to the same level because nobody's going to be up there. By the time somebody looks, it's already dirty. So we'll always water feed those ones. They're, they're tricky to get up. They're usually a dormer on a steep roof, something like that. Um, but again, something to look for. Um, another big thing that I don't even want to say a bad side of construction clean is forgetting windows. 
If you forget a window, it's really, really noticeable. And in a project like this, there's nobody standing there telling, oh, don't forget the closet. Don't forget the uh, you know garage windows. So you really literally have to go on every single wall, look in every single room, follow the wall all the way around, and uh, you have to find all those windows. But there's a lot of good things for construction cleaning too. Like I said, they're going to send you more work. You're going to get good builders who now you, it's so little. I have builders who in a 30 second call, I got a job, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars in a, a 30 second call. Cause they know what I do. They've done it. I know the builder's good. I know whatever, boom, they know me. I know them just get it done. That's what they want. They got enough things on their plate. Uh, you're going to get multiples. They're going to tell their builder friends. They're going to talk about you possibly when they go to their builder association, blah, blah, blah. So people go, I can't find a good construction clean company. Oh man, I got a guy. You're going to get referrals. And if you get referred by John's XYZ construction, the next company's going to be like, oh man, they use it. John's uses these guys. Yeah. Go with it. John's good. I like his building. He's a good builder, right? You get a lot of work. You get good price on the work. And it's super, super easy. So there are a lot of goods to it as long as you find good builders and you're doing uh, good jobs because there are garbage jobs out there, especially in construction cleaning. If I was had to choose um, and somebody said you have to get rid of something, I would get rid of construction cleaning just because it's nice but it's a big pain in the butt. It kind of ruins your zen, your flow. But having them and having the possibility for them, it's big money. So it's definitely something if you haven't done it to, to look for. Um, and finally, pricing. Pricing is one of those things, again, that has to change with all of your uh, companies. Uh, for the most part, our companies, I charge three times cost. Because like I said before, it's going to take me three times as long. Now, sometimes a window takes me ten times as long. Sometimes a window takes me the same amount of time. Three times is kind of a good spacing for me. That's what I do. Whatever your normal window price is, go three times. Find builders, find them in the, you know, not phone book, what am I, 100 years old? Find them on Google, find their sites. Uh, whenever somebody's building a new house, you can see the builder. The builder always puts up sign. There's trucks, there's crew chiefs, there's whatever. You can always read it, see it, call them. Hey, it's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I'd love to, uh, uh, get in and help you with some of your window cleaning for your final cleans. They love that. I don't have time. They don't have time to find somebody new. Now you're calling them. So it's definitely something worth looking into as builders. Do it. Add it to your repertoire. If you got a lot of new construction, if you're in a hot, hot area, it's really, really nice. If you're in with uh, remodelers, it's the same thing. Same concept, but smaller. Where when they're done, they want everything to be fine. They're maybe remodel the room. They'll have you do like the whole house. So tailor it to work for who you have in your area. It's super beneficial. And there's good money. So either way, try out construction cleans. But thank you for the idea. Uh, somebody gave me this uh, idea a while ago on the construction clean side. And uh, I screwed up and didn't have your name. So I'm sorry. So you know who you are. Thank you. But if you have ideas for any of the podcasts, again, please let me know. I love ideas. I love all of them. Uh, it does not matter if it's a good idea or a bad idea. I get a lot of ideas where um, somebody's like, oh, I want to know this. And it's like, I don't know that I can make three times or 30 minutes of information out of it. Uh, but I'll tell you that into something else when we're talking about something. So please do let me know. Uh, shoot me a text. Put the comments in YouTube. Share the video if you haven't. Um, let me know either way, but I would love ideas. Uh, if you haven't become a cool kid yet, you have to, what are you doing? Why aren't you a cool kid yet, man? Uh, no, I do really, really appreciate it. There's some of you out there who are so loyal. Let me put those orders in big, little, it literally doesn't matter. Um, that's how I make my cheddar. Um, that's why you're awesome. Uh, thank you for that. And if you want me to be your rep, or even if you've used me and haven't in a while, I want to make everything as easy as possible for you. My number is 862-312-2026. I have tons of people who shop all night because they finally are home. They're sitting in front of a couch. They're shopping. They throw it all in their cart. Now, of course, we're not shipping anything at 10 at night, right? So it doesn't matter if you send it then or you shoot me a text and be like, yo, put this in. And I put it in in the morning. 
right? It takes you nothing extra. It's like a virtual high five and is literally the reason I live and can pay for food and other stuff. <laughs> so definitely let me be uh, your rep. Uh, shameless plug over, but it's 862-312-2026. And thanks. thanks to everybody for being awesome. Uh, hopefully you go out there and uh, pick up a couple builders. And either way, until next time, go out there and be epic.